Good afternoon. Uh, very happy to join the fourth edition of the TSDSI Tech Deep Dive Online Conference 2021. I understand this year the focus of the conference is on standards for digital transformation in the new normal. Uh, very happy to join the breakout session on broadcasting, uh, specifically focused on the evolution of uh, broadcast and non-terrestrial networks. Uh, we at India are, uh, have had a very unique experience uh, with respect to broadcasting. Uh, as many of you would uh, know that uh, for several decades uh, after independence, in fact, several decades, a few decades prior to independence as well, broadcasting had started in India, and it was primarily the public broadcaster, uh, which was the only uh, provider of broadcast services. Uh, it started uh, in the uh, 1930s, 1940s with All India Radio, uh, and then in the 1950s, uh, television broadcasting came along with Doordarshan, uh, and then subsequently, uh, in the 1970s, both these organizations grew into separate uh, broadcast arms uh, of the government, uh, and until perhaps the late 1990s, uh, you only had the public broadcaster uh, as the sole broadcaster in India. Uh, and then, of course, with the opening up of the Indian economy in the 1990s, you had a whole range of public, uh, pro sorry, uh, private broadcasters uh, entering the Indian market, and uh, all of a sudden, the Indian consumer uh, who grew up uh, watching Doordarshan or listening to All India Radio. Uh, was presented with a number of choices uh, and, and the whole broadcasting scenario in India changed. Uh, it would be uh, interesting to uh, notice a few nuances about this evolution. Uh, if you'll recall, uh, historically, uh, on the radio side, we've had uh, medium wave and short wave uh, predominantly for several decades. Uh, and then came the FM uh, revolution. It started with the public broadcaster initially in a few cities. Uh, and then subsequently, you had private broadcasters also entering the FM market. Uh, but uh, the, the long range terrestrial broadcasting on the radio side, primarily medium wave and short wave, uh, continued to be uh, the, the exclusive domain of the public broadcaster. Uh, similarly, on the television side, uh, we all grew up with rooftop antennas, terrestrial broadcasting for several years. Uh, and then something changed dramatically uh, in the uh, Indian scenario. Uh, unlike several other, uh, you know, uh, Western economies or several other countries, uh, which had an evolution from analog terrestrial television uh, to digital terrestrial television and so on. Uh, in India, we kind of skipped a step in between. Uh, we went directly from analog terrestrial TV uh, to ca cable and satellite. And that was a dramatic change. Uh, so you had households which had access to a mere single channel to watch on or perhaps two channels. Now suddenly we're spoiled for choice. And today, uh, India has close to 900 television channels. Uh, so, so you're seeing a, a dramatic shift from uh, the rooftop antenna terrestrial broadcasting scenario uh, to scenario where set-top boxes, be it cable or uh, DTH, uh, offer a multitude of choices uh, to the consumers. Uh, all this was happening, uh, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. And then, of course, with the uh, advent of the internet, uh, the scenario has changed, and smartphones. Uh, the scenario has changed even more dramatically in India. Uh, we've had an, an explosion of uh, internet traffic, especially video traffic, uh, with uh, smartphones and mobile phones, uh, with an immense amount of uh, viewing and media consumption happening uh, on these devices over the internet uh, through, be it live events or be it you know, uh, over-the-top uh, OTT platforms, on-demand uh, video consumption. Uh, India has sort of redefined uh, the, the killer app for the internet, so to speak. Uh, I recall during the early days of the internet, a lot of debate uh, and e-commerce, a lot of the debate would be focused on, you know, what is the killer application? Uh, and, you know, uh, at one point in time, it was email. At one point in time, it was, you know, the web browser and uh, e-commerce sites and so on. Uh, but uh, with smartphones uh, and uh, low data costs in India, mobile data costs, uh, you have an entirely new scenario uh, where uh, the killer application is video and video consumption. And it's not just, uh, you know, uh, live streaming. Uh, there's a whole lot of user-generated content and person-to-person -person, uh, video uh, as well, which is driving this revolution in India. Uh, so in this scenario, what does the evolution of broadcast really mean? I think this is something that uh, requires uh, uh, out-of-the-box thinking 
a very different uh, approach and thought process uh, to, to the future of broadcasting in this scenario. And I think that is where I see the, the evolution of broadcast standards being very, very uh, crucial and important. Our consumer today is not sitting in front of a television. Our consumer is not listening to a physical uh, radio set anymore. Uh, in all likelihood, our consumer is either listening to FM radio on their earphones on a mobile phone, or our consumer is you know, watching live TV through some kind of an OTT player, uh, be it uh, YouTube, be it uh, Hotstar, or be it you know, any of the apps out there. In fact, I was told that uh, the, the recent match uh, between India and Pakistan uh, during the ICC T20 World Cup had an online viewership al almost more than a million, uh, 10 million viewers. Uh, which is phenomenal amount of broadcast like video traffic being delivered over the top uh, to mobile phones on the internet. And I think that is the, the viewing scenario that uh, the, the evolution of broadcasting needs to capture. Those are the kinds of use cases uh, that broadcasting needs to think about uh, if we have to make it relevant uh, in this uh, uh, end user uh, you know, behavior uh, changing habits and viewing patterns. Uh, so if we have to capture this, uh, we have to rethink uh, the role of broadcasting, the nature of broadcasting. Uh, and to me, uh, the answer is very clear that uh, in the future, uh, broadcasting has to be direct to mobile. Uh, there was a time when being direct to home was important. Uh, that was a decade back. Uh, I think decade from now, if we are not direct to mobile, uh, we probably are uh, not relevant as broadcasters anymore. And I think that would be the challenge in front of uh, every broadcasting organization and more specifically, the public broadcaster. Uh, because uh, the public broadcaster has a very unique role and a very unique responsibility. Uh, if you uh, take any uh, democratic scenario, any, uh, any nation, uh, the public broadcaster has the mandate uh, to not only put out information, news, uh, and live events and alerts of public importance, national importance, uh, but also has a very unique role to play when there is uh, disasters, when there are emergency situations. And all of these require public content, content of public importance, to be able to reach the citizenry across platforms, across devices. Uh, so that calls for a whole new range of broadcast capabilities that have to be mandatorily provision on end user devices. Now in the world of cable and DTH, uh, we had a law for this uh, and it is called the mandatory carriage law as part of the Cable Act, which required that the uh, TV channels of the public broadcaster are mandatorily carried uh, on all set of boxes. Now that was in the world of fixed television viewing. Uh, but when it comes to mobile viewing and increasing consumption of video through mobile devices, uh, we need an equivalent public mandate, uh, which requires that uh, the content of the public broadcaster is mandatorily available uh, on broadcast frequencies, uh, which are uh, delivered directly to mobile phones, uh, you know, smartphones, uh, anywhere in India, uh, across uh, you know, networks, across providers. Uh, so, so that, I think, uh, lays the, the foundation for what kind of a direct-to-mobile uh, standard uh, that we would like to see evolve in India, uh, where uh, you know emergency alerting, uh, disaster management, uh, public content of you know national interest, uh, public interest is finds its way directly to mobile phones uh, in a you know a direct to mobile architecture, uh, and and that leads us to the the next uh, question that. Uh, how should the, the standards evolve uh, to, to accommodate this uh, future scenario? How should the standards make way for this, uh, this future that we are envisioning? Uh, one of the uh, architectures that we have already put in place in 19 cities is the uh, conventional way of looking at uh, direct to uh, television, uh, sorry, uh, DTT, uh, where uh, digital terrestrial television Towers uh, are delivering signals uh, in the more conventional way uh, to, to fix television sets. Uh, so that is the first place where we would look to uh, enhance that architecture to also be able to service uh, mobile phones so that uh, 
Uh, we are able to send out uh, broadcast content, not just to fixed television sets, uh, but to also to uh, people on the go, uh, on their smartphones, on their mobile phones. Uh, and also from an end user experience standpoint, we would like to see the technology evolve where uh, these capabilities are inbuilt to the mobile phones, uh, just as uh, today you have FM uh, receiver uh, capability uh, built into a smartphone uh, where you don't need an extra piece of hardware, you don't need a dongle, you don't need an add-on you know, antenna and so on. Uh, so something along similar lines uh, we would like to see for direct-to-mobile broadcasting uh, where this becomes a capability which is inherent in the uh, mobile devices. Uh, it is an intrinsic uh, capability and, and you are able to build various multitude of applications around this capability. And, and that is when the, the true potential of uh, direct-to-mobile broadcasting will be realized. Uh, so it is interesting for me to see the, the uh, efforts in different countries uh, for example, with ATSC 3.0 uh, in uh, Korea and uh, the United States, uh, with LTE broadcast, some of the work that's being done uh, in the European Union. Uh, also, some of the efforts around 5G broadcasting, uh, which have uh, part of the, uh, the 3GPP standards. Uh, perhaps what is required uh, is to bring in an India-specific uh, dimension uh, to these standards efforts. Uh, because what work is going on in the, the other countries does not factor uh, the unique needs of the Indian market, uh, the unique demands of the Indian scenario. Uh, and so I'm very glad to see that uh, there's a lot of innovation that's happening in India, a lot of research that's happening, uh, thanks to the leadership that uh, TSDSI has taken uh, and the collaboration that TSDSI has uh, established with uh, ATSC uh, uh, in the United States, uh, roping in... Uh, very premier eminent institutions in India like IIT Kanpur, uh, uh, startup companies like Sankhya Labs and so on. Uh, so there's a need for a, a direct-to-mobile ecosystem uh, to evolve in India uh, and uh, I, I foresee uh, TSDSI uh, playing a very crucial role as the catalyst uh, in making this happen uh, and the, the intellectual capital coming out of our uh, premier institutes like uh, IIT Kanpur, IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, uh, being very important uh, in uh, ensuring that uh, India emerges as the, uh, the intellectual uh, fountainhead for the innovation that will happen uh, in the area of uh, direct-to-mobile broadcasting. Uh, and especially with a lot of uh, interest around 5G, and uh, what the promise of 5G is going to be in the years to come. Uh, I, I see that 5G broadcasting uh, to be a very low-hanging fruit. Uh, and uh, given the efforts that are happening in large markets like the United States, uh, given the similarities between India and the United States, perhaps uh, this collaboration that uh, TSDSI and ATSC have initiated last year uh, can ensure that uh, you know, these uh, low-hanging fruits uh, can be realized uh, between the, the, these two uh, large economies uh, and two of the largest markets uh, for mobile data, uh, mobile uh, broadcast services uh, in, in the world. Uh, so I very uh, keenly look forward to those efforts. Uh, and uh, it is also uh, important uh, for us in, uh, in India, especially as India's uh, public broadcaster, uh, to see this future uh, you know, happen. And, and we are uh, you know, committed uh, to, to seeing this through and we've collaborated with IIT Kanpur in this direction. Uh, and uh, we hope to see that uh, a roadmap emerges uh, for the evolution of uh, terrestrial broadcasting uh, with a direct-to-mobile uh, future in mind. This direct-to-mobile future uh, will also have radio uh, and audio, as, audio streaming uh, as a very important component. Uh, we in India have a, a, a very expansive uh, radio network uh, which uh, services you know, very diverse needs. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, made some efforts in bringing this entire diversity of radio content, live radio content, uh, onto a mobile phone through an app uh, delivered uh, through traditional content delivery networks. Uh, and. Uh, so this is something that we would also like to see happen over the broadcast infrastructure uh, through uh, direct-to-mobile broadcasting uh, and with hybrid use cases uh, where uh, audience measurement can also be built in uh, so we can make radio measurable. Uh, so, so, 
So uh, we foresee uh, you know, a multitude of such use cases and that's what makes the direct to mobile uh, broadcasting vision uh, so essential for the public broadcaster and uh, a very unique uh, India specific requirement is what uh, we would like to see happen uh, in the standards. Uh, so, so my call to action uh, today at this forum uh, would be for uh, TSDSI uh, to lead these efforts, uh, bring in all the stakeholders uh, and to ensure that uh, we have a, a D2M roadmap uh, that emerges uh, with everyone's uh, buy-in uh, and it becomes a global standard uh, in line with uh, you know, whatever is in store for the future, be it 5G, 6G and so on. Uh, so once again, uh, my very best wishes uh, to TSDSI for uh, uh, this uh, conference, online conference, and uh, my very best wishes uh, to all the participants uh, and hoping to uh, uh, very soon in the near future uh, have a live demonstration of uh, direct to mobile broadcasting uh, with, you know, uh, the state-of-the-art uh, mobile phones and a very compelling user experience. Uh, so thank you again for uh, having me uh, for this keynote today.